how do I start looking for scholarships? What are the important things to look out for when you're looking out for scholarships? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Miriam was here and thank you guys for stopping by. Happy new month. This is still application season. I would always be bringing you with exclusive top content during the season. Typically end in November, December. So I'm gonna be always bringing you guys with top content. In today's video, I'll be bringing you the top 25 exclusive USA that provides scholarship for international students. I actually talked about most of these scholarships at some point in detail during the course of the year. I would be linking all of the US videos that I've talked about. These scholarships in detail down below in the description box so you can get more details on how to apply. Some of these scholarships as well are in rolling basis. So if the deadlines for this year have already passed, you can definitely go on the website and read more about the eligibility and the criteria they use in selecting prospective students from these application portals and prepare yourself better to apply next year. That's why I am putting this out there. So some of these applications are still rolling. Some of them have ended. For those that have ended and you are interested in applying for these, definitely check out the application requirements and go ahead to make yourself eligible and gather your documents and make them ready for next year. I would first of all want to talk about a couple of pointers before we move on. The very first pointer that I will try to establish in today's video is um, a lot of people actually did ask me how do I start looking for scholarships? What are the important things to look out for when you're looking out for scholarships? And that's what I'll first start this video with basically. So the very first point that I would like to touch base with is the fact that you need to know where to look you know first things first where do you go look where do you go find full scholarships so mira moves is one of the resources you can definitely check because i take my time to navigate through these websites and direct school websites and quote them on what they say so if they actually do provide scholarships for international students i'll be sure to bring that across to the mira moves fam definitely you need to know where to look and be sure that the school is actually providing international students if not full but then some amount of tuition remittance or some amount of scholarship or funding before you apply the second point that i'll be giving in this video is to prepare in advance i already mentioned that in the beginning of this video where i said you need to prepare you can always look up and know what the likely questions or requirements that you'll be asked get yourself your documents ready and know your eligibility that's why I am like, if these deadlines have already passed and this is something that you are very much interested in, go look into the requirements and see what, check out the boxes. What do you have right now? And what don't you have right now? And then prepare towards having them for the next rolling session, for the next admission session and for the next open session. So you can definitely be eligible and you can be well fit for applying the third point i would be to work hard and keep motivated you know like these processes could be very very rigorous the processes could take a long time it could be so much back and forth there's so much back and forth in terms of like when you have been selected or when you've been shortlisted interview process submitting your transcripts converting your gpa convert all of these things could actually take a toll on an individual so definitely get prepared and mentally sound for when you start applying the fourth pointer is to make yourself stand out from other applicants, have a compelling personal statement and watch the video on how to achieve personal statement that I've already put out there. First of all, I have a couple of videos where we've already talked about differentiating between a personal statement and a statement of purpose, as well as an interview with an actual recruiter, like an actual assistant professor who actually is on the applications or admissions committee. And she was talking about how you need to have a compelling personal statement that goes a long way in the selection process. You might think you, your GPA is not a first class gpa you might think your gpa doesn't make you stand out but that personal statement and relatability is what people are looking out for you know what you what makes you different from the others and you don't have to lie you just have to be out there and say things the way they are and sell yourself in a positive light the fifth point that i'll be giving in today's video is to read the application instruction carefully because you do not want to make the mistake of thinking that all the instructions and procedures are the same. 
so make sure you read so you don't end up missing something obvious and be unprepared that's why it's kind of difficult for me to still put out like a point by point application video because every process is different for every scholarship you can apply for multiple scholarships and then each single one of them have different requirements so it's very important that you don't assume some of them might have words limitations to their statement of purpose some of them might not have limitations to their statement of purpose some of them might require a personal statement some of them might require a statement of purpose some of them might require both a personal statement and a statement of purpose some of them might require three letters of recommendation. Some of them might require letters of recommendation from only people you've worked with directly. Some of them might require letters of recommendation from both people who have worked with you in the past, either directly or indirectly. So you need to really read the application process and be sure of what you are being asked for so you don't miss out on the first screening process by not bringing your full game on. Sit point out which is kind of like imbibed in the previous point that I've already made is to make sure you have an exceptional and factual scholarship essay or cover letter. Not all of the scholarships actually do request a cover letter or like an essay, but whenever they do, make sure you have like a good storytelling ability and you are able to, you know, give it to somebody and to proofread and correct your grammar, correct whatever object verb agreement make sure you have somebody who is well knowledgeable in the field go ahead and read or proofread whatever you've written and make sure it is flawless At the end of the day make sure it is presentable enough to get you through the door the very last point i would be giving in today's video before we go on is um to get someone who would write you a strong letter of recommendation we've already made a video on how to request letter of recommendation from faculty and i would definitely advise that you make sure somebody who has good reputation who at least can write something good about you because sometimes you are being asked to waive your letters of recommendation that that means you waive it and then you don't get to see what the person have written sometimes you do you can request not to waive it and see but in most cases you don't most likely get to see what the person has written for you so you definitely want to make sure to get a letter of recommendation from somebody who is preferably if you're applying to a school preferably somebody in academia and preferably somebody somebody who is guaranteed to write good things about you so yeah i i already talked too much so i'll be cutting this video into two parts so i'm just gonna cut it here and um continue in the next video where i'll be talking about the top specific u.s scholarships that provide funding for international students so stay tuned guys bye